GPS, delighted to be with you here on this Thursday here, the 11th day of our series where we are highlighting black excellence. Please take a moment to sign in, say hello to each other, whether you are near to me here in the Twin Cities or farther away around the country, around the, the world. We're delighted that you are with us today and that you are celebrating black history through this time together where we sing, where we breathe, where we inspire our bodies, nurture our souls, and we highlight these outstanding contributions and the outstanding contributors. Please share these videos with your networks near and far so that others can learn more as well. Today, we lean into hearing you know, when we think of music, particularly uh, certain musicians, performers like The Temptations, like Ella Fitzgerald, Duke Ellington and his orchestra, we think about that soloist needing to be amplified in a way they can be heard above the rest of the ensemble. Or perhaps when your hearing begins to fade, you need a device to help you to be able to hear your loved ones uh, speak to you. Well, our contributor today, James West, is responsible for much of the technology that helps us to amplify our voices, just like we're amplifying the voices of these outstanding inventors and contributors. So today we lean into that, let your voice be heard. I wanna invite you to take stock of how you're sitting this morning. I wanna give a shout out to the Phoenix City Distance Learning Academy their teacher, Brandy Schultz, is my sister, and I know that they are watching today, so we're delighted to welcome you elementary school students with us and all the other students across the state of Minnesota and the country that might be tuning in with us as well. I've heard from many teachers who are singing and sharing these videos with their students. Thank you for doing that. Roll your shoulders back a few times. Roll your shoulders forwards a few times. Just kind of hold it up there to your ears. Hold, hold, hold. Release with a sigh. <sighs> Let it all out. Let's do that one more time. Bring your ears, shoulders to your ears rather, and just hold. Feel that tension. Feel that, that pause. Now release it all with a sigh. <sighs> Reach one arm up, one arm down. Stretch in opposition. Inhale, exhale. And let's do it again the other way. Stretching one arm up, one arm down. Palms to the ceiling and the floor. Get that good stretch in. Inhale, exhale. Great, one more time. Hug yourself to love yourself. We can't do enough of this, friends. There can't be enough hugging and enough stretching. Inhale through the nose. Let it out with a nice sigh. Ah. And let's get our voices ready to sing together today. We're gonna to start here in E flat major with an SH just coming down. An SH at the beginning and the end. Here we go. Our theme of amplifying your voice is let your voice be heard. Let's sing. I can hear you. I can hear you. I can hear you. Let that H be strong. I can hear you. Lots of H there. I can hear you. I can hear you. I can hear you. I can hear you, I can hear you, one more, I can hear you, now what if we sing it, 
Can you hear me? Turn it around. Can you hear me? With a question. Can you hear me? Put it on your face. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Move that air there. Can you hear me? One more. Can you hear me? You can take everything and make it into a vocalese. Let's do one more thing before we jump into our recognition today. It's chilly here, but it's a lovely day. Oh, what 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 a lovely day. Make that gesture. Oh, what a lovely day. I'm really thrilled to introduce you all to James Edward West. His birthday was actually yesterday. Uh, so happy birthday to James West, inventor, acoustician, a physicist, and a teacher. Born in Virginia, as a young child, he loved to tinker. We've talked about tinkering before. Think about Lonnie Johnson. And at eight years old, he went to repair a broken radio. When he fixed it, he stood up on the bed to plug it in and it sent a jolt, as the story goes, of electricity through him. His brother saw what was happening and knocked him off the bed and disabled the, the current there, saved his life probably. But rather than deterring him from leaning into science, it gave him more curiosity about science. And it's part of the reason that he does what he does today. James had dyslexia, and particularly for our students, I want you to listen to that. He did not let his dyslexia stop him. Rather than hiding from it and, and being ashamed where he stopped striving, he memorized all of his books. He memorized all of his studies so that he could hide it from his teachers and from his peers, and he earned top grades in his classes, and he was accepted to attend Temple University in 1953. And when he told his parents he was going to study physics, they tried to stop him. And they introduced him to three people in his community who had studied chemistry and physics, and they all worked at the post office. And as the story goes, his dad said, you're destined for a career in the post office. There's nothing wrong with that, but you can think about the parents wanting the absolute best for this brilliant young mind. And he was like, I am determined to make it in the sciences. So James worked with Bell Laboratories as an intern, and then he eventually had a career there. And it was during that time when he became an acoustical scientist that he worked on the microphone. There were microphones in existence before then with huge batteries, but James's work in particular with a German physicist, Gerhard Sessler, they worked together to create the compact microphone, the forerunner to what we use today and what we still use. You can see it right here on the screen. He worked on something called the foil electric magnophone and that technology revolutionized microphones and hearing aids and all other assortment of things that we use to this day to hear and to amplify our voices. He went on to join the faculty of John Hopkins University and is still to this day inventing and creating. He feels that his greatest accomplishments are his four children, Melanie, Lori, James, and Ellington. And in honor of James West and his son Ellington, I thought we would lean into an artist that used the microphone to be heard. So we're gonna perform a little Take the A Train today. Billy Strayhorn wrote the song. He was a collaborator with Duke Ellington. Ella Fitzgerald is one of the ones who made this popular. She sang with the microphone as well. So I hope you'll enjoy me going outside of my element a little bit today, uh, doing my best to give us a little jazz piano and singing along. Let's have fun, friends. Five, six, seven, eight. Wait 
to get to Harlem. Hurry, get on now, it's coming. Listen to those bells of strumming. All aboard, get on the A train. To go to Sugar Hill, way up in Harlem. Hurry, hurry, get on now, it's coming. Listen to those bells of strumming. All aboard, get on the A train. Go to Sugar Hill, way up in Harlem. I'm no jazz pianist, but it was sure fun to just sing that with you. Thanks so much for continuing to be a part of this celebration each and every morning. I hope you have a terrific Thursday. Let's sing together again tomorrow. Yeah? Yeah. Be well. <laughs>